Hello. Who are you? It's not always this easy. This guy happens to be a moron. Hey, guys, can I help you? Show him your gun. Point it at him. Always make sure they see the gun. Hello there, this is Stormdog. Today, I'd like to talk about Cold-Blooded. I went into the movie blind without being aware of the cast. I took a chance because the cover looked interesting, it had decent reviews, and I've got pretty good luck taking a chance on movies from this time period. As the movie began, I was surprised to see Michael J. Fox had a small role. I'm a big fan of his ever since Back to the Future and Family Ties. I read his autobiography and like to update myself on what he's involved in. As the opening credits went on, I was more surprised to see that he was also one of the producers. The film is a dark comedy crime movie from 1995. It was a smaller budget film, independent if you will, and probably ended up being one of those movies that saw more success on cable. It has some action in it, but it's much more grounded action than you find in a straight action movie. Between the cover and the basic plot synopsis of it being about a hitman, you may be expecting a different film. I was pleasantly surprised to find something different than anything I could have guessed it would be. The lead, Jason Priestley, plays a bookie working for the mob named Cosmo. He's quite good at it with a real head for numbers. His nights consist of sitting by a phone, taking call-in bets, and watching sports games. He lives in a weird little basement apartment, which must not have a lock on it, the way every other character can just come down the stairs into his one-room apartment throughout the movie. Nothing really happens in his life until the mob boss dies and someone else takes over. The new boss calls him in and says he's promoting him to Hitman, despite Cosmo having no desire to take the job. The boss won't take no for an answer, and he has Cosmo go learn from the current hitman Steve, played by Peter Rygart. Steve begins training him, and it turns out Cosmo is an excellent shot. Cosmo is very good at the mechanics of the job, but begins to feel the weight of killing people who are often only guilty of being in debt to the boss. Throughout the movie, we see both hitmen struggling with this, but both knowing there's no way out, no retirement from this job. The older hitman has trouble sleeping, often spends his nights drunk, and has no emotional attachments in his life. Cosmo, seeking a way to deal, begins taking yoga classes. He is soon attracted to the women leading the classes, Jasmine, played by Kimberly Williams Paisley. He helps her get away from her borderline abusive boyfriend, and a romance develops between the two. As luck would have it, or the script, the Mafia boss will not let this status quo continue. We get to see Cosmo and Steve pull off a couple hits throughout the movie. It usually consists of them going to the person's house, asking to come inside, then shooting them in the head. There's a couple of variations on it, like one target attempting to escape from them in his car, but Cosmo taking him out easily, or the two hitmen going to shut down some dealers that have ticked off the boss. With the simple action scenes that still have good impact in squibs, I am surprised in the plot that the police never catch up to them with all the fingerprints they leave at scenes. Then again, the movie does never really show the police trying to track them down. The whole movie is kind of deadpan. Between Cosmo being so deadpan that he almost seems extremely introverted or naive, plus his head for numbers and gunplay, he almost comes across as some kind of savant. I, I can definitely see that being pushed if the movie came out today. I can find zero confirmation that he's on the spectrum, so he probably wouldn't be cool on TikTok. I honestly believe they just wrote a quirky mid-90s script, not tried to make a prototype The Accountant. I really enjoyed the very different performance. The dialogue itself is a bit of fresh air. I've heard Priestley was big in Beverly Hills 90210, but I've never had any desire to watch it. Peter Rygart, I did.
did recognize from a number of films like The Mask, which I hope they never try to remake, and Oscar, a very interesting project from Sylvester Stallone. I recognize Kimberly Williams Paisley from According to Jim, and remember the years when she was in a bunch of terrible TV movies. I'd never seen her this young before, this early in her career, and she has an energy and personality that is really good. The crime boss is played by Robert Loggia, and he has been in huge hits like Scarface, even did voice work for the video game, also did the movie Big, Independence Day, plus its sequel. Granted, he's also been in a lot of terrible stuff. It's a pretty small cast and a simple movie by the end. It's more about the characterization of these roles, the dialogue, and the human emotions than the explosions and car cases. I don't remember there being any car chases or explosions. Don't go in expecting those. These are simple hitman scenes with smart, quick gunfights and some canny thinking from our main character. Don't go into this expecting a big-budget action film or a laugh-out-loud zany comedy. You will be disappointed. It's a quirky, unique film that reflects the independent films of the 90s. I enjoyed it, and it was kind of a palate cleanser because it was so different. I don't think it's worth being forgotten, but it's not for everyone. Until next time, this has been Stormdog. Please go. I'm going in there, okay? No, you're not. Oh, I'm I asked you to go. Oh, you did. You definitely did.